get going here. Okay, I want to make really good use of our time today, and we do not have to take the entire hour and a half that I scheduled for this. Um, this is your time to be able to uh, take in some of this information, and if you have any questions, we definitely have time for questions and answers, but I also wanted to just offer at the very beginning that any of you can reach out to me individually, um, and we can talk one-on-one -on -one if you don't want to discuss your application here in front of everyone else. We, uh, we're happy to do that, okay? So just know that before we get started. And I think, Caroline, if you'll put my uh, email in the chat box, that would be helpful if you don't mind, because I can't type and talk at the same time. I already would, did it, Phyllis. Thank you. Oh, oh, hi, Tamia. Thank you. Okay, so uh, welcome everyone. We're so glad to have you here today. We're so glad to see this level of interest in the agency partnership program. Um, and hopefully we can answer your questions today and get us all started on this. Um, just full disclosure up front, we just took this uh, management on and so we're feeling our way along too. And so have a little patience and grace with us as we get started on this. Uh, but just know that we will do our very best to help any and all um, interested applicants with their process through this, okay? So uh, I do wanna uh, welcome my uh, fellow staff members that are here with us today. Caroline Crappy is our communications manager and she's running the slides, I believe. We have Tamia Grisset and we have Allison Schwedner. So welcome to all of them. And I do believe instead of Hardy, it's actually Mark Lamb, uh, for those of you who don't know him, uh, airport board, airport staff. And he is the resident expert on all of this. He's been doing this for years and years. And so um, he is definitely the an expert on this and can help us uh, with any nagging questions. But we're really trying to take this work uh, off the backs of the airport staff so that they can do their regular jobs, which we all know is so important, uh, and do some of this management work for them. But again, the ultimate decisions are still made by the airport board. Okay, so here's our agenda for today. Uh, just a brief introduction about TTCF, who we are and what we do, for those of you who don't know us well. Uh, a little bit about the agency partnership program, then we'll get into the nuts and bolts of this application process and the timeline for that. Uh, we've already gotten a few questions, so we're considering them frequently asked questions. Uh, so we'll maybe walk through a few of those and then leave it open for all of you to have questions. Um, and I can open the software if you wanna go that into that much detail, if anybody wants to hang on for that, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so we'll give you the links to all of that and turn you loose at three o'clock this afternoon when it goes live. So with that, we'll go to the next slide. So here's our mission. Uh, most of you know this one, uh, have heard it before. I hope you feel like we live up to this. Uh, we feel like taking on the management of this airport agency partnership program falls squarely within our mission of connecting people and generating resources. So we hope you feel like it's a good fit for us to be stepping in in this way. We certainly do and we're looking forward to it. So uh, other than this program, we do a lot of stuff out in the community. We obviously do our scholarships and grant making. We've, we've been raising funds through our emergency response fund for uh, victims of the Caldor and the Dixie Fire, uh, just here currently that's been going on. We also have ongoing initiatives that address community issues that we know are so important in our community, whether it's uh, housing, uh, the forest market-based solutions that we're all searching for, uh, and then also the ongoing work that our uh, community collaborative uh, under the direction of Allison Schwedner brings to this community. Uh, that, just to note, the community collaborative outdates the community foundation by a good 10 years. And so we are lucky to have that under our umbrella and benefit uh, in many ways from the work that Allison does with that. So thank you for that. So the agency partnership, you know, we can be so proud of this district. Uh, looking back on this, there's more than a decade worth of work that the airport has put into this, uh, into their different programs for getting money out into this community and supporting and bettering this community. Uh, and it started out, as you can see, in 2011 with a budget of $25,000 and has grown substantially since then. 
And part of that growth, um, you know, you have some growing pains with that and a lot more people are interested in the program. And so we wanted to establish a process that was fair and equitable to anyone applying. Um, but honestly, there are no shortcuts. This is not the easiest um, resource to qualify for. This is a partnership program between agencies in our region. And you may or may not be a nonprofit that is benefiting from it. Uh, it could just be agency to agency. So just remember, this is not a typical grant process that the Community Foundation might fund. This is not a grant at all. Uh, this is a partnership and the airport district is responsible for all of the payouts with that and the um, agreements with uh, on this partnership program. So again, we're not usurping any authority of the airport or their board. We are merely managing this process for them. So you can see that this started out uh, sort of organically by uh, supporting the fire protection district and helping to purchase a, a very much needed fire truck. And then in 2015, 2016, uh, the airport stepped in with a large funding uh, for the community aquatic center. So after that, we just, you know, the board decided that we need to have, you know, more of a process in place for doing this work and doing it fairly and equitably within our community. So while they have a million dollars budgeted on a line item in their budget, which is all public uh, information act uh, protected uh, or uh, uh, proposed their, um, we have that ha that can be split or allocated among housing, transportation, or this agency partnership by the airport board. So there is no set amount that's available for this program. Again, it is up to the discretion and the approval of the airport board for the ultimate uh, distribution of these funds. Are there any questions so far or have I glossed over anything that's not clear to anyone? And you can also type questions in the chat and Allison or, uh, I mean, uh, Tamia or Caroline will uh, be able to read those for us. Okay. Okay, moving on to the next slide. So as I mentioned, this fits into our work. We do feel like it fits into our mission. You know, we have a long history of uh, running these programs uh, and getting to know our nonprofits in the region, building trust among them, and just understanding how they work. And we feel like the expertise we bring from that is of mutual benefit to the airport board and can help us all come to the right collaborative consensus for the best and highest use of these funds that benefit our region. So TTCF, it prides itself on running a transparent and equitable process in anything we do. We also uh, tap the volunteers in our community to, um, to come in and serve on a committee to review and reach consensus internally as a full committee on our recommendations for this funding. And then those recommendations, again, will go to the airport board for their ultimate approval or modification. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, and I'll be real honest, I don't, I know somebody might ask, well, who's on the committee or who chooses the committee members? And that is a work in process. This is happening this year, um, sort of overflowing with our regular grant cycle and the volunteers I was gathering for that committee. So uh, we're still working it out, who's gonna serve on which committee and, and the timing of that. So I don't have a full roster of the committees yet to share with you, but at some point we will, and we're happy to share that if anyone has a question on that. Okay, so here's the nuts and bolts. Basically, the rest of September is going to be what I what we are going to refer to as phase one. That's the letter of intent process. So as soon as this is over today, the site will be live and you can start your letter, your letter of intent um, for this process. And the reason we're doing that instead of a full application is because this process has been on pause for a while. Uh, we knew it was kind of hard to gear it back up and just hit the ground running uh, with a full application and we didn't want to waste anyone's time. Uh, so we wanted to gauge interest and eligibility through this letter of intent first, but your efforts will not be wasted. Anything that you provide us in the letter of intent, if you are approved for a full application, that information will share over into your application process and you can edit it or just take it and run from there to finish out the full application. So there's no wasted effort here, we hope. 
So as you can see, we're opening that today. So you have until the 21st to get those letters of interest um, submitted. And then we'll take a few days internally to review those and make sure everything was done correctly before we turn it over to our committee for them to review individually. And then we will be setting a meeting that uh, sometime in that week of September 24th through the 30th to make our decisions. And then we'll turn around and notify finalists of who's been approved uh, to submit a full application. Okay, so then, so that basically takes care of September. And then in October, you basically have that full month for to submit your full proposal. And then basically the month of November is back, the ball is back in our court at TTCF to uh, review the proposals, hold our committee decision meetings and come up with our recommendations and prepare our presentation to the airport board, hopefully for that December 1st meeting that's already scheduled. Assuming that all goes as planned, uh, we will be then uh, notifying the, of the funding decisions immediately after that airport board meeting. Are there any questions there? Okay. So uh, we've already been asked, as I said, a few questions have popped up and why, are, why is TTCF doing this? And I hope I've explained that already, um, that we feel again, that this is within our mission to uh, be providing this service to the airport board. And we hope to bring our transparent and equitable process uh, to their benefit and to the whole community's benefit. Uh, where you can find out more info would be at our website. Uh, the, the airport district has uh, a reference on their site under their giving back tab that refers you basically back to me and to TTCF. Uh, we hope to answer all of your questions. So please reach out to TTCF and not the airport district for your questions regarding this process. Um, there's... Uh, also, the Holy Grail, as I call it, the, the policy instruction 311, especially section three on these agency partnerships, this basically gives you all of the information you need for this process. Um, and the, the application is basically set up to follow the criteria that was set out in this policy instruction. So there should not be any surprises uh, once you read through that policy instruction on what is required of you to be able to qualify to be considered for this process. So I would really urge everyone to read that policy instruction 311, as I said, uh, and you can skip to pages seven through nine for this agency partnership uh, discussion. So I already mentioned about the committee. Um, I guess one of the big questions is what do we do if we don't have a partnership in place with a public agency? And honestly, um, you know, it, it, it was one of those things like, okay, how do we get this started? How much um, lead time do organizations need to know that this is starting up again after the pause? And um, I know it could be problematic if you're starting from scratch and don't have that worked out yet, but I just have to caution you that there are no exceptions to that, that you must have that agency partnership in place and have another public agency that has uh, a substantial either in-kind or um, direct cash investment in your, in your program if you are a nonprofit that wants to apply for this. So, uh, to be honest, this may not be your year if you can't get all of this done, but I, it would not hurt to do some legwork and, and try and find uh, an agency that you feel like does share your mission and vision um, and see if you can get that lined up again uh, for maybe next year. So I apologize if, if, but we had to start somewhere. And we signed our agreement in April, I believe with, I mean, sorry, we, we, um, submitted our request for proposal in April and the airport accepted it at the end of April at their board meeting, but it took until July to get our uh, service agreement all ironed out between both parties and get started. So again, we had to start somewhere, so you have to start somewhere. Um, we hope uh, if you do have any questions about that specifically, do give me uh, an email uh, and then I, we can arrange to have a call, whatever you need. We're, again, we are here to help in that regard. Um, some people have already asked how much they should request. And again, because this requires that agency partnership with another agency, uh, 
it needs to be commensurate with however much that other partner is going to put in for this, either in kind or uh, in direct investment. So, you know, don't ex don't think that you can have someone put in an insubstantial amount and think the airport will backfill to get you where you need to be. That probably is not going to happen. This should be a somewhat equal playing field among partners. So the contributions levels you get from others should then dictate how much you ask in this application. Um, again, that mentions the policy instruction. Um, please, please, please read through that. Uh, what focus areas does the airport district have? As I mentioned, this uh, program falls within their budgeted line item for transportation, housing, and the agency partnerships. But as we know, the, uh, the their community sponsorship program is an ongoing program for smaller amounts up to $3,000. So uh, they're still interested in doing that work in the community. So if that is more uh, in line with what you're asking for, please go directly to the airport for those community sponsorships. Those are still in process. Uh, this is not replacing that at all. Um, they also are always looking for um, STEAM uh, projects. Uh, they know that there's a shortage of aviation workers coming up through the schools and that taking that career path. And so they have wisely uh, decided to invest in, on the you know, front end of that and try and get more interest in aviation and aviation careers. So there's always that interest as well. Uh, Mark, is there anything I missed there on the focus areas that you wanted to add? No, Phyllis, I think uh, you've done a, an excellent uh, review of the program. Uh, one thing I would like to uh, reiterate is that the uh, the idea of this program is for partnerships that benefit the constituents best overall in the community. Thank you, yes. Okay. All right, so um, point of contact is myself for the applications. If there's any communications questions, Caroline can handle those for you. Um, other than that, I'm going to open it now for any questions that you might have. Anything I can help anyone with? I've got a question. Oh, there's a question in the chat. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Emily, and then we'll take the one in the chat. Great. So I'm wondering, um, you had mentioned with the agency um, partnership, so working with another public agency on whatever we are asking fund for funding for, if they are supporting us in a different way, say they provided a site or they're providing funding for something else related to this same initiative, mm -hmm. um, but not the exact thing that we're asking for funding for, is that still an okay ask to move forward with? Uh, even I if think that, so, that yeah. Is, is, uh, is yeah, funding. again, that falls right into, we're feeling our way along with this and we want to uh, address every application, every letter of intent uh, with an open mind. Um, but I, I do think as long as you have some sort of estimation of what what the value of that contribution is I think we can consider it and Mark again if you want to speak up and correct me on anything I put out here publicly feel free don't don't hesitate I, I think that's accurate uh, that's an accurate uh, statement okay. great thank you very much sure okay the question in the chat uh, Okay, so Thomas Rosenblum was asking about uh, the community sponsorship request and there's a fillable PDF with the questions. Actually, that is not what we're using now. Um, I think that might, okay, that's the... Okay, the community sponsorships are different than the agency partnership program. Uh, Thomas, the community sponsorships are for amounts up to $3,000 and those are uh, being addressed by the airport district with that billable PDF form. The agency partnership program is for amounts of 3,000 and over and that is handled by TTCF now through our online software. And um, we'll give you the link to that uh, in the chat box in just a minute, but that does require the letter of intent. Does that make sense? Did that help? Uh, yes, I think so. I just, um, 
online uh, when you find that form with the questions, it didn't actually say like submit this to blank person. It just says fill this out. So I was hoping for some guidance on who am I sending things to. If okay. there is somebody at the dish at the district that if there's a point of contact or is that you, Phyllis, or just anything you could let me know about that would be appreciated. Okay. Yeah, Thomas, uh, it says Hardy Bullock on my screen, but uh, my name is Mark Lamb, and I'm actually the uh, point of contact for all the airport district community sponsorship requests. And because of COVID and the cancellation of so many programs and events, the requests this year have been uh, about half of what we typically get. So there's definitely funding available. So I would strongly suggest if you've got a... Uh, a nonprofit or a youth program uh, that's scheduled and uh, it's for, uh, you'd like help under $3,000, uh, definitely fill out that uh, application and email it to me and uh, we, can, we can communicate further on that program one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, perfect, thank you. And again, because Mark will be so busy with those, uh, it again behooves all of the questions for the agency partnership to come to TTCF now, okay? Um, okay, let's see. Sue Ray asked for the requirements for the letter of intent. Um, it's going to be pretty self-explanatory once you open our link to apply. It's basically the checklist that the airport has already devised for eligibility for this program. And so you basically go through, you give a little bit of background information and a, you know, a brief overview of what you're proposing, but then you go through the questions that are required for eligibility. And if you can't say yes to everything, you don't have to say yes to everything at this point, but you should have a plan to be able to say yes by the time you get a full application done by the end of October. So, that's the assumption that you will be able to fill out that checklist in uh, in total and you know with complete answers by the end of October. So again, at this point with your letter of intent, if you cannot check yes on everything and we don't necessarily necessarily expect anyone to be able to do that at this point, you should at least have a plan for being able to do that and be able to explain uh, in a brief narrative about what your plan is to be able to fully complete that. okay? Uh, Phyllis, I see that Justin has his hand raised. Okay, thank you. Justin? Oh, hi, everybody. Thanks, Phyllis. I just had a question on the timeline because um, just double checking and going back that there's no limit. There's a, something written in there about two year eligibility. There's no back time issues, right? Like, so we had a partnership in 2017 for the Beaver Trail here in Kings Beach and the district helped pay and support the TAMBO organization and the PUD and others who put that trail together. That was back in 2017 and 18. And so I don't think no, you'd be precluded. No. That's no, there's no time frame for if you got a, a partnership three years ago or five years ago. You're we do ask for that information and that would be considered overall just depending on the other That's applications that are submitted. We want to know that. Uh, and in fact, we could get it from public records. Perfect. but. Uh, but yeah, I don't know that you would be precluded based okay. solely on that. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so Sharon asked for an overview of what the partnership needs to be with whom, what mission and sample organizations to partner with. Um, Sharon, that there's a lot of, ex there's been, I believe, uh, 13 uh, agency partnerships already uh, approved and in process or finished uh, with the airport district. And those are um, accessible on their website. But uh, in short order, basically you must have another public agency, um, anything other than a state or federal agency, those do not qualify. So a you know, local or county agency as your partner to come to the airport board with this proposal and you have to show public benefit to the constituents of the airport district and probably the, dis you know, if, if it differs slightly uh, with the public agency uh, that's partnering with you with their constituents as well. So just, you know, showing that public good and having that partner with you uh, is basically what it takes. 
Uh, you will notice if you read the policy instruction that you have to show that, that there was a formal resolution if that, that has an elected board or an official board of that agency that you're partnering with. You need to show the proof of that, that they are in fact partnering with you and are willing to enter into this agency partnership as well. Okay. Who else? Oh, okay, Cody asked, uh, would you be able to apply for both the community sponsorship and the partnership? And I would say yes. Uh, typically, it's not for the same, uh, it may be the same agency, but not necessarily the same ask. So, uh, yes, you could be able to. Uh, I, missing... list, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so, I am Alex. I'm from AIM High, and we mm -hmm. were. Um, we just finished up our three year um, part agency partnership with the airport district. Mm -hmm. And it sounds to me like this new um, way of going about getting agency partnership buy-in is not through the airport, but through a completely different public agency. Is that, I just wanna make sure I'm understanding that now to reapply AIM High, we'll have to establish a relationship with a new agency in order to be considered for funding through the airport or is the airport considered the public agency that we can partner with. I think course. your your prior partner was the was the school district, wasn't it? So that could okay. still be your your partnering agency to come to the okay. airport again. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Okay, just brief show of hands. How many of you think you will apply? <laughs> okay, good. I mean, we definitely encourage it. We want to see it. Um, these resources are there for the community and we'd love to hear about your ideas to benefit the community. So we look forward to reading more. Is there anything else I can do for anyone today? Does anyone want to see the software and see an example of the questions? I would like to see that, Phyllis. Um, okay. And then there was also another question in the chat about the board resolution. Does it need to be complete in time for the letter of intent or um, can it be forthcoming? No, it does not have to be uh, complete in time for the LOI. It would need to be complete by the time of the full application submittal at the end of October. We would need to know that that was really going to happen to be able to consider your request. Okay. Phyllis, I think it would be helpful to see the uh, form because I think that may answer a lot of, or may fuel. Sure. Yeah. Okay. If there are any other questions, go ahead and uh, ask them or put them in the chat and I'm, I'm going to open the software. Okay. Sharon, you had asked about, while, while Phyllis is pulling up the software, you had asked about, you know, what kind of other historical agency partnerships the airport has, uh, has managed. And it's really a pretty broad spectrum of, of partnerships. It's been everything from uh, like rescue equipment for uh, Tahoe Nordic Search and Rescue, uh, also for the North Star Fire Department. We've done uh, a lot of trails partnerships uh, in both uh, with the North Tahoe PUD in Kings Beach in, uh, in the Tahoe Vista area and also one with Tamba uh, going all the way from uh, uh, Stanford Rock to uh, Emerald Bay. Uh, and then a lot of youth programs uh, like uh, 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 Alex just stated uh, we've had a great pro, uh, partnership with AIM High uh, during for their summer summer school or summer camp programs, and also Gateway Man, uh, Mountain Center for uh, youth uh, mental health programs. So it's a pretty wide open uh, spectrum of, of previous partnerships that the airport board has uh, has been behind and supported. Thanks, Mark. We're really grateful for that, too. Um, it is really amazing what the airport district has done for this community and continues to do. So thank you for that. OK, I'm going to share my screen and show you the software. Hold on just a second. OK, is everyone seeing this where you apply? 
So because we extended our community grant cycle until this Friday instead of last Friday, this is still showing up, but after uh, the 10th, the only thing when you go to this, uh, when you land on this page will just be that the Truckee Tahoe Airport District Agency Partnership will be showing. So all you need to do is click to apply here. And so here's the letter of intent. So again, these are due by September 21st. Here's a you know, brief introduction. We do ask that you read that policy instruction number 311 and then check the box that you have done so. Uh, again, just to hold you responsible for your end of this, that you understand the rules uh, before you get started. So we just want to know some background information on your agency and who we should be dealing with on this, the authorized representative. Uh, name of the proposed public agency partner, again, proposed. You may not have that finalized yet, but we would kind of like to know who we're working with out in the community and who is considering this work. So here's where we ask for a brief overview of your potential request, your potential uh, project. So you have uh, 5,000 characters. I think that's about like two pages of you know single spaced writing if you were to do that. So you do not have to use every character, but hopefully that's enough for you to give us that brief overview. And we understand again at this letter of intent that this a lot of this might just be intention and not uh, reality yet, but we do wanna hear about it. So here's where we ask, here's where you start the eligibility checklist. Okay, so again, by the time you complete a full application, all of your answers to this checklist should be affirmative. They should be yes, but we understand at this point that they might not be, but this is just a good check for you to know what you still need to do in order to be considered eligible. So we're asking if you have the endorsement. We're asking, okay, make sure that this is not a state or federal agency. We're asking, does it does not promote religious purposes? Now, note that it, religious organizations themselves are not excluded. It just cannot be for promoting a religious message as the primary purpose of the program. Ask that you don't discriminate. Some pretty uh, basic things here. You're not just an individual. This is either a nonprofit or another agency that's applying. Uh, if you are non, uh, not for, um, profit we want to understand that if you have if you're benefiting a nonprofit with this uh, then we want to make sure we're, we're checking different ways to make sure that this is actually benefiting the public so we're asking if your program and events are open to the public uh, if you were be be available to make a public presentation to the airport board if needed not saying that that's a given or a requirement but uh if you were called in and asked to present before the board that there would be someone that would be willing to do that. Uh, obviously, we don't want anyone that's already involved in a lawsuit with the district. Uh, and then just again, checking your uh, upstanding moral and public character. Um, so here, again, in this checklist status, if there were any no responses, here's where you can give us a brief explanation of the time you think you need to be able to complete those, uh, you know, what your plans are on that, how you think you are going to make this a viable application, okay? And that's basically it. So then you just submit your LOI. Uh, once you submit it, you cannot make edits. If you do find that you need to make edits before the deadline, you can uh, email me and I can revert your status back to draft and you can make any edits you need. So don't panic if you accidentally hit submit LOI. It does save as you go along, but some people just feel better clicking something to know it has been saved. So I've had people that thought they were just clicking save and actually click submit. So don't panic if that happens. I'm here to help you out with that and can revert your status. Okay, so that's basically all we need for this letter of intent. And again, these answers will self-populate into that full application where you will take that um, checklist and be able to edit these answers. If you had a no before, but now it's a yes, now you'll be able to fix that and move on. And then once you're at that stage, there are some additional questions that need to be answered for the full application. That will require the budget, that will require your financials, that will require a board list, that sort of thing. Okay. 
Any questions on that? Is it okay if I stop sharing this? Everybody okay with that? Go back to everyone here. Liz, there's a question from Kathy Eccles. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, the partnering agency should be a public agency, not just another community grant, correct? Yes, that is correct. This is a partnership between the airport district and another public agency, and any money that flows, flows between those two. It doesn't come through TTCF. It doesn't necessarily go directly to you. There has to be that partnership in place. Okay, anything else? Will the slides be, yes, we can, we can certainly work on that, yeah. And again, that timeline is posted on our website. It's embedded in the, the letter of intent itself. Um, but if you have any questions, again, please feel free to reach out to me for any clarification on that. Okay. Easy crowd. Anyone else got a question? Good job, Phyllis. <laughs> Thanks, Kath. Okay. Well, I will not take up any more of your time. I really appreciate this interest. As I said at the beginning, I am here to answer any questions. Uh, I am always available to read through something before you submit it. If you get something ready for me and want me to take a look at it, uh, happy to do that as well. Uh, and again, just random questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question uh, or a bad question because we're all just starting from scratch here and just want to be of as much help as we can for you. So hey, feel fellas, free to reach out. Yeah. If you don't mind me interjecting sure. and asking a question, I have more of a question for Mark. So some of the other grants on the North Lake um, and then within the basin are making a shift away from visitor focus to more stewardship and local focus. Will there be any priority or designation given? These are community focused originally and these par partnerships are always community focused. Any designations regarding like non-tourism focused specific projects or anything like that? Not that I've heard directly from the board, board of directors, but okay. they definitely, uh, they're most interested in partnerships that, as I said earlier, that actually benefit the tax paying constituents yeah. within the district. So yeah. programs that, uh, that, that benefit you and I uh, as, as property owners or tax paying uh, constituents of the district are uh, always in focus. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Mark. Okay. So Liz, there's one more question from Sue Ireland. Can an agency have two requests? Uh, would, would it be under the same partnership or would it be two different agencies that you would be partnering with coming to the airport board with two absolutely separate things? I guess I'm not sure. Uh, two independent request for two different projects. Is Sue Ray able to answer? She may not. Can you unmute Sue? Um, no. Okay. Well, I'll, you know, the short answer is I don't think, you know, we can prevent you from uh, applying twice. Um, Honestly, it just depends on the merit of the uh, proposals themselves. One might, you know, stand out more to the airport board. I don't know that you, they would be weighed equally. I just, you know, again, when you have a somewhat competitive process like this where you're getting everything in at once, uh, it depends on the, the field you're working with. You know, it depends on all the other applications. Um, so, yes, you can have two in the mix, but um, I, I don't know what that will do with your chances, so to speak. Again, it, it will all depend on what the airport board, you know, wants to prioritize from the from the list of applicants that they do have in front of them. Thank you. I I've just figured too. out how to unmute on my phone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. Do you um, want to give us a little more information on what you were asking? I don't know that I've answered your well, question very well. Uh, you did, but um, I the question is whether the um, whether the agent 
um, I'm involved in a project that has an agency partnership. Um, the agency may have a separate project that would want to come forward, not in partnership with us. Oh, ah, yes. You know, yes. the question is whether it's two separate, they would be obviously have different, you know, different focus. It's a completely separate project. Mm -hmm. um, it, there isn't anything to prevent that, is there? No, I don't think so. Again, because that agency is required to have their own substantial contribution to the overall projects, if they're yes. willing to put their money there or their time or efforts or, you know, in kind, then I think it could be considered for sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? I'd like to reiterate for Sue that uh, the board's historical airport board's historical definition of an agency is another agency that has a publicly elected board of directors or council or whatever it's called, but that the district constituents have voted these representatives in place. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. And again, all of that is in the policy instruction. So um, I definitely appreciate Mark uh, chiming in on this. Um, but again, there are no surprises. It's all well documented for you in that policy instruction. Okay. Anything else for the good of the order before we sign off? I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, James. Um, do we really, I'm uh, sorry, I came late. This might have already been covered. Do, are we supposed to reach out to Mark Lamb and the, and the airport district to bounce our idea off them before we file our letter of intent? No, we prefer you did not. Uh, again, we've, TTCF is taking on the administration and management of this. Uh, to free up the airport staff time. Uh, again, they are doing community sponsorships uh, at a staff level, but not the agency partnership. So all of that pre-work should be done through TTCF. Any questions, any bouncing ideas off of that sort of thing? Very good. Okay. Good question though. Okay, anybody else? Going once, going twice? Okay. All right. Well, thank you all very much for uh, your time today. And hopefully this was uh, somewhat helpful and will get you started. And again, we are here to support you and get your letters of intent in. Um, so just let me know again if you have any questions and we are happy to help. Okay. Thanks so much. Thanks, thank Phyllis. You. Great presentation. Thanks, Phyllis. Thank you. Thanks all of you. Bye. Bye-bye.